let's take a look at some signing day highlights. 20 of the top 25 classes will be in either the SEC or the Big Ten next year. Now, we heard Chip Kelly at UCLA say eventually you got to you gotta break apart from what is uh, the Power Five right now. So your thoughts on where uh, the college football is now that apparently the same old programs are dominating National Signing Day. So there, yes, 20 of the 25 will be in the SEC or the Big Ten next year. Florida State, I don't know if you guys know this, is meeting. They're trying to contemplate their future. If you guys don't know, they are very, very, very upset with the ACC because the ACC nixed them do the ACC nixed them getting into the playoff. The ACC is the reason they're not in the playoff because the ACC nixed the 12 team playoff this year. But that grant of rights is ironclad, guys. They can't get out of it. But this is a really big problem because they lost KJ Bolden, who flipped to um, Georgia yesterday. Meanwhile, Jordan Seaton, the high profile guy that Colorado got committed two weeks ago, is now most people he didn't sign yesterday. Not only did he not sign, most analysts are now actually projecting that he's going to flip to Maryland. And the reason that's a big deal is has a lot to do with it's not just it's not Colorado versus Maryland, Loxley versus Dion or anything like that, or where he's from. It's that he's flipping to a Big Ten school. In Colorado, he's I think he's recognizing in the Big 12 is going to be playing with one hand behind their back. And so this is a big, big, big problem going forward. Um they got the, these schools have to somehow work their way to the SEC or the Big Ten. I don't know if they're gonna be able to, but Florida what 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 programs in the SEC should be worried? Because I don't think that if they do this power conference thing that every single SEC team and every single Big Ten team are going to be part of a 38-team, 36-team power conference. Um, so my thoughts are you're going to leave out of Vanderbilt. You're going to leave out some other programs. So – how which programs in the SEC should be worried or the Big Ten should be worried about their standing among the best programs in the nation? Or does well, or do you think all the Big Ten and all the SEC make it? Oh, I think they're all, they I think they're all gonna make it. That's gonna be kind of the thing. They're all gonna get in and they're all gonna make it. Um so uh I think Tennessee, I, I think, yeah, I think Vanderbilt is safe. I think Northwestern is safe. They're safer than Colorado or Florida State at this point. And well, this is no, why I'm not, I'm, I'm not, but that just because they're in the SEC and that they automatically get in a bigger, uh, another level of college football is kind of idiotic to me. I'm not, I'm not calling you an idiot, but I, I just, if you, if you separate from the power five or whatever it is now, then just because you are a part of the SEC or the big 10, I don't think you should necessarily make it. I don't think, what is a Rutgers needs to be in a, a, a power conference uh, at all, a mega conference. I don't think they need to be in it. I think there's going to be some picking and choosing going on. I think having a tie to the SEC or Big Ten might be a help for like a South Carolina that might be a borderline to make that. But I don't think it's a guarantee you're in. Well, for the SEC to make some decision to merge with the Big Ten, like the schools themselves aren't going to do this right now because the SEC and the Big Ten still negotiate the TV contracts. So the conferences would have to do this. And for the conferences to do something like this, a certain majority of athletic directors would have to agree to it. And the question becomes, will there be enough athletic directors agree to it? And I think that's where this all stems from. So that's why I think the Vanderbilts and the Northwesterns are safe. And... I, I, yeah, I don't think they're going anywhere. I think they would just combine. I mean, look, let me give you – just to go back to history real quick, Dave. Remember when the old Big 8 combined – like the with the Southwest dissolves and Texas, Texas Tech, Baylor, and Texas A&M go to join the Big 8. Remember that? And it's the mm -hmm. Big 12 and they combine conferences. You didn't see the Big 8 say, well, we're going to combine with these, but we're not going to take Iowa State with us. We'd rather have this – I mean, they didn't do that. Now, they probably would have rather have done that. You, you don't think they would have rather have just kicked out Iowa State and not have them? But Probably. they they made the decision. We're keeping Iowa State. The whole Big Eight goes with us. The Iowa State, the Kansases, the schools that never mattered in football whatsoever at the time, Missouri, um, all went be all went with Nebraska, Oklahoma, which was really the driving force 
Because if they had had their chance out there, they probably would have just said Nebraska, Oklahoma, Texas, Texas A&M. Those were the only four big schools that anybody wanted. And everybody else was a throw in. And so I think that. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. So I think that everybody's, I think the whole SEC and Big Ten are safe. And you're already at 34 teams right there. And so I think the other power five schools are just going to have to jockey and Florida state is locked into the ACC through 2036. I think that grant of rights is ironclad. I don't think they're getting out of it now. What about Clemson? Are you leaving out Clemson too? There's rumors that Clemson might get left out anyway. Uh, I, I, some reporting I've heard Dave is that the sec is not as interested in Clemson as we initially thought. They don't really care to add Clemson. And if you realize that if if you talked about a mega conference of 36 teams and Florida State and Clemson are locked in there and the SEC didn't take them in and they didn't make a mega conference, that would essentially signal the end of those two schools as programs of relevance. Why do you think Florida State and Clemson are working so hard to get out? Why do you think Florida State's working so hard to get out right now? Not just those two. Miami, that's another one. End of relevance for them. Um so I'm yeah, gonna ask I'm gonna ask the message board, other than Vanderbilt, which SEC teams would, would you leave out if they were to be left out? If some power conference comes in and they're selecting schools, which SEC programs would you leave out? You know, I'm gonna jump to Missouri pretty quick, despite the season that they had, but I think Arkansas would be worried if there were some guys getting pared down. Um, who else would be worried? Outside of Vanderbilt and what you brought up, Missouri, it's hard for me to see any SEC teams worried because most SEC programs are revenue generators. They bring in money. I mean, Arkansas, say what you want. You know this, Dave. Their fans are loyal out there. They show up for every game. They are a draw, and they get you into the Texas market in a lot of ways. So, I mean, it's I, – I, I would have thought Arkansas would be worried, but, I mean, Roy Kramer saw value in Arkansas 30 years ago when he added them. And now, as we know, and if you guys want to check out my sports history video on the SEC and the conference title games, I brought this up. He mainly added Arkansas and South Carolina because he wanted the conference championship game. He didn't want to expand the SEC. He just wanted the legal reason to be able to have the conference title game in December. That was actually the reason the SEC expanded. I don't don't see, if you're a mega conference, how you can possibly have Vanderbilt uh, in there. Let me ask you about some Big Ten teams that should be worried. It's brought to you by State Farm agent Don Self. Customer service still matters for well over 40 years. They built their business and reputation on taking care of their customers. If you're looking for a State Farm agent or any agent, you should call 423-396-2126, donself.net, donself.net. It's right below. You can click on that. Take care of their customers. Everybody's shopping for a better price. But what happens when you have a claim? You want to know that you have that customer service there. So what Big Ten teams should be worried? I guess you could start arguing the TV um, factor with Northwestern being the Chicago market. But I don't think there's a lot of Northwestern fans in Chicago. Um, and yeah, Illinois brings you that market anyway. Yeah, and and Maryland should be worried. Rutgers should be worried. Maryland I mean, brings think- you the D.C. market. Rutgers, Big Ten cares about TV markets. So Maryland's going to bring you D.C. and Rutgers is going to bring wait, you New York City. But I'm like a step beyond you. I'm, I'm not even talking about TV markets, which may be a factor. I'm talking about some czar of college football, the guy that Mark Emmert could never be uh, when he was president of the NCAA, says, I'm picking 36, 38 teams. And I'm not factoring what you Big Ten says is important, what you SEC says is important. I'm going with the best teams. And to me, See, I that's not going to happen. That's not going to happen. What's going to happen? What would happen? Think that'll happen? If, this, if there was a super conference, the SEC and the Big Ten would facilitate it. There wouldn't be some third party czar that comes in and just picks teams out of there because one, Though the SEC and Big Ten would never allow that largely because they would say, well, you still got to be with us in basketball. This only works in football. Think about it, Dave. Basketball can't do this. Basketball, you need the backing of the conference. And, and, and in every other sport, too. It's only football where you could pull this off. And the, those leagues wouldn't let you do that it, w- w- relative to the other sports. The SEC and the Big Ten would have to come to some sort of an agreement. Look, I think eventually it's just going to be like the AL and the NL, quite honestly. I think the SEC and the Big Ten will be the AL and the NL, and they're going to value teams differently, and they're not going to kick out anybody that was in their league. They've they've taken pride in the fact that they don't expel teams. They they make a point that's for lesser conferences. 
And hey, can, you, can you imagine Vanderbilt just getting beaten like a dog in a mega conference, which is what they would? Uh, Derek says Vanderbilt should uh, get a coach that runs a triple option, wishbone, flex T, whatever it takes to win and make teams uh, hate playing you. I think there's that's a lot of truth. Idea. No, it's, it's a really good idea. And I will say this, too. I think to some extent that's what Josh Heupel's offense is. In a diff, it, it's a more modern version of that, but I, I don't think teams like getting ready for Josh Heupel's offense as uh, as opposed to the regular offenses they may face week in and week out. Oh yeah, I'd rather face. I'd rather get get everything prepared for a pro style offense than Josh Heupel's offense any day. I agree. Now it's still not as bad as preparing for a triple option offense because those cut blocks that they still allow. I mean, this is why Georgia Tech under Paul Johnson could just go eight and four, nine and three every year with mediocre talent all over the place because they had the cut blocks and the triple option and it was hard to prepare for. Preparing for Josh Heifel's offense is actually here's what here's where that's the best parallel. It's why Bruce Pearl had early success in the SEC. When Bruce Pearl came to the SEC, nobody was 40 minutes of hell had gone away. You know, Nolan Richardson had been fired for five or six years at that point. The SEC had become more of a half-court defensive warrior in, in a t- conference. And here comes Bruce Pearl, Sam. I'm going to run the flex. I'm going to press 40 minutes. Nobody was ready for that. And that's where Josh Heupel's offense is. But a lot of teams are running tempo now. So I don't know if it's the tempo. It's just the – it's not even – you could play Josh Heupel's offense every week, and I just don't think you'd be able to scheme for it the way you want to because of it's about the personnel and what he's running. But I think Vanderbilt, look, Vanderbilt won't be the only school like this. You'll have Vanderbilt, you'll have Northwestern, you'll have Purdue, okay? Um, you brought up Rutgers in Maryland. I, I mean, these these schools are, and look, I don't think the SEC or Big Ten are done expanding. I, I'm telling you guys this right now. 2036, 2037, whatever it is. Yes, Florida State, Clemson, Virginia, and UNC are going to sink into irrelevancy. But Virginia and UNC, there is going to be a bidding war for those two schools. They both, the SEC and the Big Ten, want them. Yeah, D- Derek brings up a good point. Vandy hurts strength of schedule in the permanent season model. I, I agree with that. I mean, I, I, I've, I'm okay with a nine and three team making a college football playoff if there's a mega conference where. Every week you're seeing matchups of elite teams. I don't want to see it halfway in between, which I'm afraid is the path that we're, we're, we're going on. Your thoughts on that, Caleb, as I remind you, Rick Terry Jewelry Design. They want to be your jeweler looking for affordable game day jewelry. How about the Fire Opals? A Tennessee tradition, rickterryjewelry.com, rickterryjewelry.com. So I want it to go – I want it to stay what it is. Or I want it to go all the way to a mega conference where you literally pick the 32, 36, 38, whatever it is, best teams just based off their merit. History and what they're doing over the past 20 years, uh, that's how I would choose them. And I could go down the list pretty easily and get to 32 teams, no doubt. You wouldn't get 30. It would be about 65, 70. That's how they would go. They'd go 65, 70. Um, which is that, So just the top half of college football right now. Um, who those 65, 70 would be, I don't know, but look, Vanderbilt is safe on that. They're safer than group of five schools. I know how you would do it. That's not how it's going to happen. It's not going to be like the smaller NFL. It's going to be, it's going to be again, 65, 70 schools. Cause they, the, the goal for this, and this is a big deal, Dave, they still want the sport to be somewhat national. You know, you, if you were the college football czar, you would want every corner of the country. You'd want college football intrigued by every corner of the country so you're going to have to at that point take like a colorado or a utah or somebody like that just to have a presence of college football in the mountain west and yeah but i'm okay with colorado oregon and washington being my representation from the northwest and then the uh, southwest united states would be uh ucla usc and then obviously we fill in the the big uh, 10 and SEC teams to fill it out regionally. I just don't care what happens in the Northeast is the bottom line. I mean, I I don't think college football is ever going to be huge there. Uh, I think that's going to be NFL territory forever and ever and ever. And I don't think Rutgers is ever going to compete with the Giants. So I wouldn't go out of my way to make it TV friendly for them. I wouldn't care. They're, they're trying. I mean, you don't forget it. Don't, Forget this, though. If college football programs in the Northeast had whatever you think about him as a human, I always qualify that. But if they had listened to Joe Paterno in the 70s and actually agreed to form a Northeast conference in football, 
college football would have been big in the Northeast. The problem was they decided to ice out Penn State and form a basketball conference that became known as the Big East, which folded because they didn't all want to get beat up by Penn State. But if they actually made an effort, you you remember this, Dave. People really cared about Syracuse football for a long time. Mm -hmm. And Boston College had a pretty good run, too, in the 80s. So there, it's you are right. College football is effectively dead in the Northeast because of how much they care about pro sports right now. But if you do like a 65-70 team field with a 12-team playoff and one of those teams gets a chance of getting in, I mean, this is your philosophy, right? In a 12-team playoff, you think eventually in the age of NIL, if teams are getting in, there will be start, there'll start to be an increased interest in the sport and more effort to make teams competitive across the country. I like what Travis says, four quadrants, four conferences. I could put that together pretty easily, and I might. Yeah. Big Ten has no, – what, what's the Big Ten quadrant? They're now in L.A. and New York. I mean, this is hilarious that Washington is going to have to fly to – but, have you to fly realize from I'm, but you realize I'm talking about a world there is no Big Ten in – SEC anymore. The com- I know, but I'm saying the commissioners won't the commissioners won't let that happen. Greg Sinke and Tony Batiti need jobs. Why would they willingly give up the jobs they have? Well, I mean, and... they would still have jobs and it would still be called the SEC, but you would just reposition and kick some teams out. I mean, they need jobs, though. I mean, this is look, they you, need you see jobs. this all the time. Yeah. Greg no, Sinke no. wakes up every day. How am I gonna pay my mortgage? No, you see this all the time. Like you see this all the time. And just like, I mean, I'm not going to, you know, you see this all the time in just the world of life. Like for instance, the government will create something sometimes to address a need and then it never goes away because the people in that area, that's too many jobs. So they can't get rid of it, even though it doesn't provide any service anymore. That's conferences in college football. There's no point for conferences anymore. If you really think about it, but they have them because the conference administrators and leaders have become the biggest power players and they don't want to lose their jobs. It's a jobs program. The same way the war on drugs was a jobs a jobs program in the in the nineties. Okay, it was just it was a create it was a fake job for a bunch of people to go tell you how bad drugs are, and like people they that's the problem. So I don't think they're going I don't think they're going anywhere for that reason because they have so much power and they don't want to lose their jobs. There's no reason for conferences if you ask me in football anymore. Now volleyball, yes, it is stupid that Washington is going to have to fly from Seattle to. New Jersey for a Tuesday night volleyball game. That's the dumbest thing in the world. But football, there's no reason. For a good reason, Caleb is not a big Hugh Freeze fan. And uh, uh, interesting note that we want to get to about him. I think a lot of people are rooting against Hugh Freeze, and I can't blame them. I mean, maybe he is uh, completely uh, over his – yeah, women thing. Um, but I'll believe it when I see it.